Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Sprites of Life podcast. I'm Lucas. I'm Chris. And I'm Don. And it is DLC time, baby. Oh, it's so much easier to do this when everyone already knows the thing coming out. No interlude, no no preamble. I, I want to talk about this DLC. It, it, have you guys gotten a chance to touch it? Only like 20 minutes. I, I, I It wouldn't download for me last night, so I did it this morning before I went to work, and I've, I played for like an hour. I'm bullying the in-game world with uh, Torko Lilligan. Oh, you're not bullying it with uh, Incineroar already? I get bullied by Incineroar in competitive. I mean, I, I did stay up later than I should have, and I did beat it. So we have that metric. I have things I want to talk about with this game, because unlike any other Pokemon, any DLC or whatever, you actively need to play the first, the Teal Mask in order to get the Indigo Disc and understand it. And there's like a part one, part two story stuff to it. I like the content that they dropped into it, but we will get to that in a bit. So let's just get the science stuff out of the way uh, really quickly on the news. Um, I was digging through it and I found something that was published fairly recently. So we've talked about it before that pangolins are some of the most trafficked animals in the world, usually trafficked from parts of Asia and Africa to China in order to be used in medicine that has not been proven to scientifically work kind of a bummer but good news they were able to make a database of collected dna samplings from those scales and run it through an algorithm that can help pinpoint where the major bits of trafficking are coming from so they were actually able to watch over the years as the pangolin poaching trade has shifted from one country to the next and they were able to pass that on hopefully in the future to help with law enforcement to stop it which I think is pretty neat. Absolutely, yeah. Does it do anything to help the ones that are already trafficked, or is it more of a just getting an idea of where to focus attention? That second one. Where do you focus attention? No, they should be out there Liam Neesoning the pangolins. As just go out and save them. Absolutely. But you don't you have to tell Liam Neeson where to go. You can't just send them over to Nigeria if all the pangolins are being hunted in Cambodia. And so that's what they've seen, is that over the years after taking about, uh, I believe they looked at about around 111 different samples, and they were able to break them down into multiple different subgroups, and they were able to analyze all these different scales, and eventually, do over 600 pangolin scales they um, scanned between 2012 and 2018, they were able to see a pattern shift from... They were starting off in Ghana and Sierra Leone, moving to Nigeria, but now most of them are coming from Cameroon. And this could be due to, you know, a crackdown on poaching over there, or it could be that the populations were depleted enough that the poachers had to go somewhere else for the scales. So it's a really useful tool for keeping these animals alive, because while you can't save the ones that are already on market— you can find ways to help make sure that the others are not being targeted or at least go after the poachers. I mean, there's no way you can escape from this sort of data. It's also the proper use of AI instead of making art. I'll just say that. You also, you said that you have, uh, you have to know where to go. I'm pretty sure Brian Mills did not know where to go in Taken, and he still got the job done. Okay, all I'm saying is, according to their... <laughs> 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 no, I was just going to say that they they were able to get it right between 100 kilometers of where they found it 87% of the time. But just screw it. That was, really that, that was actually, That's actually pretty good. That's pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> I, I wish they had more stuff on Pank. Like, if they do make a regional variant of Sand Slash again, make it a tree pangolin or something. Come on. It's right there. It, it's so Grass cute. ground. Grass ground, it'll be fine. Well, actually, you know what? A... They, they did a full type change. They went ice steel, so like they could do whatever with them. Yeah, no, they've already done it. And like Meowth's already have three of them. We can give Slan Slash another. No one cares. It'll be fine. All right, on to the, act the gaming news. Um, At this point, most people already know the Game Awards showed up, and Baldur's Gate 3 just picked up a bunch of those awards and left a few for the rabble to pick up for themselves. I mean, shout out to Armored Core, though. It, it did get its one award. Oh yeah, no, I was um I have, haven't gotten to play Arm Record that much. I finally got it like last week. It's been really fun so far. I like mechs and I like customizing robots. Um 
So yeah, I, it's it's I, I think it's fun. I, I played the original Armored Core on the PlayStation like one when I was a kid. There's a new game plus and a new game plus plus that like changes everything story wise, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm nowhere near there yet, but I'm very excited to get there. And I'm glad that the uh, the Moonlight Sword continues to be a theme in FromSoft games. I'm gonna have to track. That <laughs> I understand that reference. That was uh, that was actually pretty cool to see that they put that in. But was that part of my Dark Souls rant episode? Yes, it was. We talked about That's the right. giant bug. <laughs> yes, yes, but yeah, um, there's there's um, a Moonlight Sword in many FromSoft games, so I'm excited that, that continues. Um, before we get to talking about my thoughts on like the game and some of the Pokemon, I wanted us to talk a little bit about the DLC's location itself because it opens up a really interesting idea that has been building up over time um have either of you heard of seasteading isn't that like where you're like you you make your own island is it like rapture is it like rapture it's like rapture and water world combined sign me up (laughs) the two things you definitely want to model yourself after let's go obviously with this dlc instead of a quiet mountain town you're in this massive floating superstructure it's not even an island because that terrarium that you're going through in the DLC is all completely underwater. Like all of it is all the way down hundreds of feet. And there's, if you're going through the game, there's classrooms and a cafeteria and a school store and a clubs. And like, it's a huge area to go explore. And it just floats off the shores of Unova and is home to a whole bunch of Pokemon as well as people just out there. This thing is probably one of the greatest achievements of modern man in fiction. And they're just like, oh yeah, no, we send kids to, to school with this thing. Oh yeah, no, K through 12. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Like we, It's a battle school. Relax. And it, it's just like, what on God's green earth did you create? What an Arceus's name is this superstructure? Why didn't you go to school in like a normal location? Are they, are there like normal adults just like living their lives there and it's also a school or is it just a, like a boarding school on the water? There's like teachers. Well, I mean, I mean, are there, pe- are there people there who are not there to be associated with the school? No, it's just a school. It's like Hogwarts. <laughs> I-, I wanted to talk about it because seasteading and this school kind of tie in because this school is kind of what the dream of most seasteaders is. The idea of seasteading is that you build your own island or your even even if you're just on a boat floating 200 miles off the shore of any major nation and you can basically make your own rules. You don't like the government, you don't have to deal with them. Any government at all. Seasteading has become more and more talked about in recent years because technology is starting to advance to the point where people can even start looking at the idea of living completely away from land. Just be at the ocean forever and never look back. Um, International ocean laws, I mean, there aren't that many. Like if you go further out, like as you get closer to a country, you're going to get the local laws, you're going to get the federal. But eventually, once you get about 200 miles out, there are no rules. You can do whatever you want. But why are the legendaries still shiny locked? Um, again, that's their rules. We're they decided in, to we're make no, their We're own in international rules. waters, though. Well, they, they need to not be. They didn't go there to avoid international law. My, my in-game theory is that they did it to avoid taxes for all the work that they're doing. <laughs> I, my, that's my in-game theory. That, no, they're just, they built this massive super school for monitoring, money laundering for Team Plasma and to avoid taxation. Like, that's what it's there for. It's an amazing piece of, it, it's an amazing piece of scientific engineering, but it's also there to dodge taxes. Like, there's no other explanation. They, they built it out there so they could find the giant turtle. Well, that's the thing. Like, okay, slight spoiler, like... The giant turtle isn't at the school. You'll eventually go back to your mainland and go find the turtle there. You basically go to the school to beat up the students. And then the turtle is an afterthought. Yeah, it's literally like, no, I'm just here to go beat up the students. And that's what ends up happening. Um, In this world, though, like, they can just have this giant self-sustaining area with no need for outside help. The technology advanced to such an extent 
that these massive companies just sprung up and built this super school. I think that's also the reason why they can just give you all the starters. Again, no. Every other part of the world has like rules and regulations on like what starters can you give them? Do they have to be local? Are they going to be invasive? No, nah, they're like, no, nah, we built our own ecosystem. Take you wanted you wanted Incineroar? Take one, man. We got like 12 of them. Go nuts. Like it's a battle school. I do like the idea that there are researchers that had to figure out what were the optimal starters in each area. Like what's not going to, what's good enough that the kids will be good and get better, but not so good. You will devastate the local populations. I mean, the second they give a living flamethrower to somebody, I feel like there's a problem or any, any of the cat Pokemon just destroy everything. I mean, Don, if you had to give a child a starter, do you feel that an Incineroar is an okay starter to give them? I mean, maybe it's too good of a starter to give them, to be honest. I think that might be also a thing to balance out. It's like, all right, if we give you something too good, are you actually going to not catch anything and just start wiping out the ecosystem with it? On the note of ecosystem, they built multiple ecosystems right next to each other. And like this thing has to deal with storms, rogue waves. Algae blooms, power needs, nutrition, sustainable drinking water. Like, I don't even want to think about what is powering this machine. If I know my Pokemon lore, it's probably nothing good. Or all those uh, taxes they're not paying. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally, they're literally burning the money, not paying through taxes to power the machine. <laughs> or, or even worse, um, remember in Johto where they just had a bunch of electrodes like, um, uh, like powering yeah, up? Yeah, like, you had to make them all explode. Yeah, no, and that's what they're running though. If you go deep enough into the um into the bowels of it, it's just electrodes being constantly exploded, being poked with sticks by the kids who didn't pass the classes. That's the saddest. That's the saddest. I mean, Pokemon lore is sad. It, it is what it is, but I I think that's something that you can tie to. This is like a utopian version of what seasteading is. Like this is what people who are like tech billionaires think seasteading would look like, but in reality, our world doesn't have super fancy technology or magic turtles or any of that stuff. Um, one of the biggest problems we see today is that, one, the technology isn't there to help them survive. And two, the main reason people are doing this is to avoid taxes. It's not because they want to try something different or live on their own. It's that they don't want to pay their fair share to any society ever. And they just store their money there. Uh, the French Polynesians got real mad because a bunch of rich tech bros were like, we're going to build a little island off your shore so we can hide all our money. And they were like, what? Excuse you? The one other downside is that if you are not associated to any nation, I can just take your stuff. Like, I can literally, like, you have no law here. I have guns. You have fewer. I can just take it. I mean, that's what happens when you don't live with laws you don't have to pay your taxes you do also have to defend yourself which is pretty which is something you'd probably have to deal with and not even like defending yourself like there's defending yourself against like the people in other countries but i feel like if you're just making your own island or space you are far more likely to get wiped out by some kind of like storm or something because there's not like the natural barriers that have built up over time to like weather those things right yeah, you can't build, and there's nothing you could really build to stop a rogue wave. It's called a rogue wave for a reason. And if you ever watch, like, those um, videos of, like, the people in Alaska or, like, any of these northern Atlantic ships riding the waves, like, the horror and the terror of how big they are throwing the ship around like a rag doll. Like, can you imagine trying to live on something like that? Like, that, it's insane. Uh, the other problem they have is that they usually get um, a little bit stagnant gene wise just because no one really wants to go there and like like nobody wants to go and visit your weird little island thing because there's nothing there for them like if you're just trying to live alone there's no reason for anyone to come and trade with you you don't offer anything there's no reason to come and visit you there's nothing to look at i mean you can trash talk how much you hate authority all you want but in the end you're still going to need someone to actually come visit i mean the blueberry academy fixes this because they have an exchange program in so they can bring in new people not just from unova but they can also bring in people from other schools to like share ideas and trade and they created a battle school they created the location that people wanted to visit that's smart that's how you see stead properly again 
super cool structure. They are totally doing it to dodge the Unovan taxes, and I'm here for it. I mean, in, in fictionally, I'm here for it. In reality, pay your due. Don't don't just avoid your taxes. I need look when you drive down the roads of South Carolina every day. You want people to start paying their taxes. I hate those roads. But aside from that, I love this location way more than the teal mask. I mean, Don, you've gotten the chance to play it. Only, like, honestly, I, I'm barely into it, to be honest. I mean, yeah, but just from that little time you've played. I am enjoying it. I like, I like the characters so far and stuff. I like the uh, the world design sort of stuff. is pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I liked the teal mask aesthetic of, like, rural Japan complete with xenophobia. But I also like these super rich kid super academy. I, I think it's pretty neat. But it also did come with a bunch of Pokemon, new and old. And before uh, I have my list of the new ones, Don, Chris, I wanted your opinions on, aside from Incineroar coming back, is there anything else, any old Pokemon you are excited to see coming back? I Like, this is a maybe a cop-out answer, but I just love when the starters get put in the games. I love all the starters, even the one that Don hates. Chespin and Quilladin. <laughs> I like. I I'm okay with two of those three. <laughs> Quilladin can go away. I I would love it if like Don somehow modded the game so that way Quilladin like uh, Chespin evolves just into Masingo until it gets to 36 and then it turns to Chespin. Like it's just a blank empty void. Like we don't look at it. We don't talk about it. For me, I'm excited to see. Um, Honestly, I got to see Malmar again, and I got to see Golurk. I, I love Golurk's aesthetic. Like, literally, less than 12 hours from now, I am going to be, like, driving to go get a tattoo of Golurk on my right arm. Oh, are you getting one? Sick. That's going to be sick. It's going to be so sick. And I'm going to, of course, post on the Discord first. But uh, Malamar is one of my favorites just because it's one of my favorite contrary users. I just love this thing so much, and I want to see if I can at least do some damage with it. I mean, it, it, it's neat. Uh, Don, what was yours? Um, actually, so yeah, I think Malamar might actually have um some extra use because that that new weird Terra thing going on, you know? Oh, the Rainbow stellar, Terra. That, like, yeah. you, get the stat, you get the stat drops, and you get the stat drops, but you're contrary, so you'll not get the stat drops. That means you're a little bit safer. Um, what I like... Um, no, I mean, you're going to get boost, yeah. so it's going to be sick. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I'm having the time of my life. Um, but in terms of actual Pokemon, um, I guess I have a couple. Uh, one, I'm glad we got Whimsicott oh, no, back. So, no, you, we got Whimsicott. I know that was one of your favorites. Um, I, I saw your boy, your, your weird duck. Porygon Z. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, I'm very I'm very excited about Porygon Z. Um, stuff gets crazy with Terra <laughs> and adaptability. Normal Terra, hyper-beamed cho with choice specs. Adaptability. Yeah, uh, Just no, uh, Terra Normal Specs Hyper Beam has like a roll. It's a roll to one shot vest iron hands. Iron hands. Down. With assault vest. And like max bedef. It's a roll. Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> yeah, so I'm crazy. very excited about that. And also I got Smeargle back. I'm excited to do stupid stuff with him as well. Um, but there's quite a few returning mons. I think it'll be cool. I think... um. I hope we get one of these formats soon. I hope we get one that's more limited again. Um, because, like, as much as I like some of the paradoxes, like, our power levels right now are so crazy that some of, like, the weird little dudes don't really get to shine too much because, like, Torn Urshifu is just the best thing. Um, so I wouldn't mind if they, were, like, did a, a rule set that just restricted us to the latest DLC mons or something, but I don't think we're going to get that. No, they want you to use all the legendaries that you've hunted. Eventually, they're going to get what I like to call the gods, and just like, oh hey, yeah, throw a Kyogre on your team, have fun. Next next year will probably next year will be the rotation where we get the restricteds. Yeah, I mean, I'm just happy. Like, so if you haven't seen it yet, there is there is that new um, form of Dynamaxing, and how it works is that not Dynamax. Not, what am I saying? Terastalizing. Yeah. Terastalizing. Ugh. Terastalizing. Where instead of terastalizing to a type. You get the stellar typing, which means that you get you keep your typing, so you keep your weakness and your typing. But any move that you use will get a one point five boost to its attack one time. So if you are an assault vest user who's using something like say a Metagross that's an assault vest or whatever, and it's using bullet punch, earthquake, hammer arm, and 
I don't know, explosion, then that means that you could literally just, you, you could turn on the stellar typing and they, you could go with whatever one you wanted and get that boost. Like you would, and you don't have to worry too much about changing back to your, to a different type. It's, it's, it's interesting. I understand that some people find it mid, but there are a few Pokemon. I think they could get some use out of it. Yeah. Well, so the boost is only one, it's one off per uh, type you though. Yes. So that's why I'm saying like someone who. No, yeah, you're right. With something with something with four with four different attacking move slots, like a, like a Metagross or like me, like an Entei. Yeah, you know, weirdly enough, my old Electivire set from Gen four or five might love that thing. Yeah, Ice Punch, Cross Top, like Wild Charge, like that oh, was a lot shot, of fun. Yeah. yeah, that was good fun. But um, yeah, no, there's a lot of really cool Pokemon in it. But of course, we had some new ones, and we're gonna talk about most of them, starting with um, Chris. Your boy got an upgrade. <laughs> Hydrapple. Applin is coming on strong. Nobody asked for it, but we got it anyways. <laughs> Chris asked for it. <laughs> yeah, Chris, like, dear Mr. Nintendo, I know where you live. Give here my demands. More apples. More. <laughs> Literally just the phrase. More apples. And every time. <laughs> Did we have grass dragons before Applin? I think so. Isn't there one? Oh, Executor. Yes, Alolan yes, Executor. Yes, yeah. That, that was the first yeah. grass dragon type. They okay. loved it so much that they decided to do more. So before Galar, we had one grass dragon, and now we have six. G Galar, or G, uh, what was that <laughs> meme? <laughs> How come you get to have that many dragons? Yeah, you get to have six old dragons. Hooray. I mean, I looked at its stats, and it finally has something you can work with. No offense to the others, but like 106 HP, 110 defense, and 120 special attack. As someone who once lost in, the, like, I think I was in the top four of the finals of a, of a local tournament to a Dynamax um, Flapple, I wouldn't say that this is, the, this is the first one they can't do anything, or that can do something. Appleton could do some stuff, too. But, yeah. like, comparatively, this stuff. thing seems stronger. I mean, it's a, it's a three stage evolution, so it's going to be stronger. Yeah, the defenses are real. Um, one hundred six, one hundred ten, eighty defenses are very good. Um, typing like typing wise, Grass Dragon is like you've got some weaknesses for sure. Uh, four X resisting Urshifu is sick. Um, you have Regenerator, which is awesome for bulk. Um, and you still have the super sweet syrup option, which is pretty cool. You also just die to Chin Pao. And as well as the move Fickle, Fickle Beam, which um, just doubles the move's power, and it's 80 base power. So it's just, is that really just how that works? It's random. I've used it. It is random that it will double it. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, if that's just a straight up 160 base power move, that's insanity. Either way, that's still pretty good. That's basically just Dragon Pulse and sometimes way better. Yeah, no, and it's, um, it's a really fun animation because um, if you notice the animation of Hydrapple, it's like one head sticking out. And then the other heads will come out every now and again. If you use Fickle Beam, like it'll say like, oh, all the heads decided to work together for once. And all the heads come out and shoot laser beams instead of one. It's really cool. cool. Now we've got a King Ghidorah to have him with. Um, well, and he's 4 well, he's four X weak to, uh, uh, what's his name? Anything made of ice? Yeah. Any, uh, no, I had a rep Backscalibur. Oh, yeah. He's four times a week to Backscalibur. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I love them. And, again, the whole line is based on worms that go into Apple, which is funny because they're not actually worms. They're larvae from the... Well, one of them, specifically, is the Coddling Moth larva. And that's the one I think that this one is based on because of how deep it's digging in. Also, it does get Heavy Slam, and it's, like, pretty heavy. It probably one-shots Flutterman. Um, all right, I'm going to keep talking, and I need you to run some numbers while I do. <laughs> Chris, this is like your baby. Like, you realize how cool this thing is mythologically as well, right? So, the, I, I think it begs the question, what is it inspired by? So, obviously, you have Hydra. That's in the name. Seems very on the nose. It is also the uh, Apple Hydra Pokemon, which just sounds hilarious. But so, then obviously, Greek mythology, you have the Lernian Hydra that everyone knows. Animated Hercules, that Hydra is pretty well known. Are you familiar with the um, Laden? I wasn't until I started researching. It was really the shiny that kind of put me off to what this thing was. So the 
Laden in Greek mythology is a dragon that guards the golden apples. Oh, of the like, um, or I, I know what you're talking about now. The Hebrides or not Hebrides? What's their name? It was the uh, the Garden of Hesperides. Hesperides, yes. Which was also uh, uh, Hera's garden with uh, the golden apples. Hercules had to go in, retrieve them. Do you know where the Garden of Hesperides is said to be like? Like it, when people map out things in Greek mythology, like where things you know would be, et cetera, et cetera. Only in Percy. I only know where it is in the Percy Jackson book universe. <laughs> where is it in Percy Jackson? I think it's in California. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not California. Um, um, isn't it? Let me take one wild guess and say Iberian Peninsula, Morocco. Hmm. Oh. So, so right, right, right next to the Iberian Peninsula. Yeah, I want to say in the in the in the books, it's like. I think maybe it's like Mount Orthus or something. It's like where the Titans hang out at. Again, I'm going off like Percy Jackson lore from like seven. I don't know how many years ago now since I last read Percy Jackson. But that that was my experience with the Golden Apples. Well, the the other bit that you have with Hydrapple and this entire line is candy apples, which have any, either of you ever actually eaten a candy apple? I don't really like apples that much. They have them in Japan, and whereas we do caramelized here, they do candied apples there. Honestly, not as big a fan. I prefer caramel or icing. I'm so confused. So I've never had one, and it just like boggles my mind that they're just like hard, and then also like a hard apple inside. Like I don't know, I don't know what the texture is or what it's supposed to be. Crunch combined with a different kind of crunch, with a mushier crunch, double crunch. Yes, <laughs> double crunch, double crunch. I would want the apple. I feel like the apple should be soft. I mean, listen, if you leave it out long enough, it'll get soft. So there you go. That'll solve your problem. I mean, you'll also get to have a worm in it. Well, sorry, technically not a worm, but still. I mean, there's multiple different Marth lavas. Who knows? You can, you know, wait for one to get in. Actually, I think the candy coating would keep them out. They're not exactly tough. I do want to give them props, though, on this design, because I feel like this is the best looking grass dragon that we have. A little like his little head poking out. Oh, bar none. This thing is great. Like this thing is like a ten out of ten design wise. Like this thing looks so cool. I love it. Out of all the new Pokemon design wise, Hydrapple is probably my favorite. Thank you, Diplin, for doing the the best secret reveal when you were when you were able to use Eevee Light. Eevee Light. Everyone thought it was a glitch, and then like they were like, "No, it's not." And everyone was like, "Oh my god, oh god." <laughs> I mean. And it didn't do too terribly on its own. I mean, like, it wasn't good, but it could live. Like, there were people trying to make teams with it, so it wasn't, like, the worst idea. For as good as Hydrapple is, we now have to go and talk about some of the Paradox Pokemon. And I'm really sorry. A gouging flame, gouging fire sucks. Thank you, I hate it. <laughs> have you seen the design of our, our new Entei? It took the best of the cats and made it the worst. It's It's balancing don look at this thing look what they did to my boy i've looked at him i've looked at him i've looked at the stats he does he even get sacred fire anymore wait what does he get then nothing he gets to be sad <laughs> don't they have like a move like a, a new move don't, don't they all have a new what's his new move burning bulwark that's probably it what's it do Burning Bulwark protects the user from all effects of moves that target it during the turn it's used, including damage. If Burning Bulwark blocks an attack that would make contact with the user, the attacker becomes burned. Oh, unless okay, they're, that's unless pretty they're, cool. Unless they're immune. Right. Okay. So I'm looking at I'm looking at your stat at its stats. Uh, 105 HP, 121 defense, 93 spadef is pretty sick. Uh, base 91 is kind of cool. Um, 115 attacks are the same as normal Entei. I think. I think it struggles um, with the Arcanines more and with um, opposing normal Entei. I, th I think normal Entei having that base 100 is pretty big as well as having extreme speed and sacred fire and being immune to intimidate. I mean, I don't know. I think I think this thing's niche is niche is like very, very small. Um, I think it's going to struggle to like be different than Incineroar and like Heatran more so. And I think the faster fire types are like better at being offensive. Oh, 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 it gets Dragon Dance. Okay. There's something they can work with there. That's that's something. I mean, you could have Protosynthesis with Dragon Dance or something. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm looking at its other options. It doesn't have the craziest move pool, but um, it's got some tools. Like, I don't think, I think it's probably the worst of the, I think it is the worst of the three. 
But um, I don't think it's like impossible to use. And it does get that new uh, fire type stomping tantrum that also Gyarados gets, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, if you need Dragon Dance to be viable, it, it, it kind of feels a little harsh. I, I mean, but it is based on something neat that they somehow ruined. So if you've ne everyone heard, has heard of Triceratops, like that's one of the key dinosaurs you have to pick as a child. You kind of like picking your first starter. You have to pick the dinosaur you relate with the most. And it is a it is based on a member of the Ceratopsian. So there are about 60 known species that we've dug up through fossils that Triceratops is the most famous, but there's 59 other ones. And they decided to bait this one on Shirakosaurus. If you've never seen, you, you've probably seen Shirakosaurus, actually. Hang on, let me pull up a picture for the Discord for you. Oh, yeah. You see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, has, you've, got, you've probably seen this at least once in your life, just because I believe it was in the, what was it, that dinos, the Dinosaurs movie that Disney put out? They had a ride for a while. Hang on one Good second. Good Dinosaur? Yeah, not a good dinosaur. There was another one that was better back in the day. Hang on. Yeah, there it is in the Discord. You can see it. But again, they, they kind of lost... I feel like if they added a horn, it would have been improved. If they, it looks like it's wearing a hat. It doesn't look like it changed that much. Yeah, no, it is, it is based on a Triceratops. So everyone who was guessing that it was going to be Triceratops-based got it right. And somehow the fan art did it better. One of the first things i did when i saw this pokemon was send a picture of it to will you know from you know our our fossil buddy and he's literally saying like is this a fan art joke or is it the real thing he couldn't tell the difference it's very it's it's very it's kind it's it's sad it's kind of yeah sad. but i mean the real dinosaur is cool lived in the late cretaceous period and we still don't know what those massive frilly heads did we either think defense mating display or heat displacement. I think the heating displacement is probably what this guy would be using it for. Makes the most sense to me. He's on fire. If you're using all that body heat, you can dispel it out that way. So that way you can either do damage or protect your internal organs. I mean, like the fact that, oh yeah, we revived an Entei from a fossil in this one. It's like, okay, cool. So the only thing that changed with time is that hats went out of fashion and he took his off. It bums me out. But otherwise, I think it's cool to talk about yet another dinosaur added to the game, which is why we finally get to talk about the cool one that they dropped for the past Paradox, and that is Raging Bolt. Do we have any thoughts on Raging Bolt? I do not understand this Pokemon, but it's fine. What do you mean you don't understand? Like, you can't conceptualize its existence, or? No, like, the cloud beard, just, I don't get it. I, it I'm not, I, it's not for me, but that's fine. I mean, I actively do get it. I do. Uh, and that is in part because of a lot of the um, ancient Chinese myths that are, are surrounded what, they, what this thing is kind of based on. Um, so have you heard of uh, uh, Kilin? Q-I-L-I-N. So it's basically China's version of a unicorn. And it has multiple different myths across multiple different times and eras but around the 14th century they were there was this idea that like the giraffe was a killing like it would that, that it had this magical power to it so what pokemon did in a sense was combine the idea of the killing as a giraffe with the brontosaurus style to create a really cool and interesting design the exact opposite of gouging flame where they they did Gouging Flame only did a little bit with the design. Raging Bolt just took it completely in a different direction. It is com almost completely unrecognizable in its form. And I really appreciate that dedication to it. I mean, I like it better than Gouging Fire, for sure. I mean, Brontosaurus literally means Thunder Lizard. I mean, come on. How much better can you get than that? I will say, the, the elbows are a bit out of sorts here. I'm looking at its body, and I'm like, oh, no, you, you should have knees in different locations. But aside from that, I really love this Pokemon. And Don, you said it was good, Don? I, I think, so I think um, Raging Bolt is going to be really good, competitively speaking. One, um, I'm not sure how much competitive stuff you guys have been following, but Urshifu Tornadus is, like, kind of really good. 
Raging Bolt not, uh, has its signature move Thunderclap is basically electric sucker punch. So you just nuke Urshifu or Tornadus when they try to do an attack. You have more special attack than Fluttermane, which I don't know if people are talking about too much. And because like all of your other stats are so much slower, like you're going to get the Protosynthesis boost and special attack. Um, you could very easily use this in like Trick Room style with Torkoal. Like you're a little fast for Trick Room, but having that strong priority. Um, the bulk, like 125 HP is really good HP. 91, 89 defenses are pretty good. I think Raging Bolt's got a lot of good use on like balance teams. I think it's good and really good into opposing rain. I think it's insane into Urshifu Tornadus. You resist their stabs and you one shot either. Um, you've got dragon moves, you've got electric moves, you've got uh like Volt Switch, which is nice. You've got you know, scrolling through uh Solar Beam, which I guess you can do something. You don't have the craziest move pool. I mean, Solar Beam would work given that it's Path Paradox. Solar Beam sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, Solar Beam works. You're getting the Procentus boots. You also have Weather Ball as well, which is is pretty handy, I think, on this Pokemon. I think I think this guy's going to be really good. I was going to say, I like that the the Electric Sucker Punch is a special move. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very tailor-made. It's I think it's a very good signature move, and I think, I mean, I think I think just having something that really pressures Tornadus Urshifu metal-wise is going to make it really good. I'm sure they'll all start using Ferrigarath. But um, it's still like also with that bulk, you're you're eating the surging strikes. I, I think you could go bulky and even eat like Mystic Water, Terra Water, surging strikes, and the rain. Um, so you can really like just bulk. I think you. I think the move is you can really bulk him out. Um, you've got Volt Switch for pivots. You've got a good priority move. Like I, I think I think you, I could see this guy just being good on like more balanced teams as well, just because he can kind of like. He's just sort of a splashable thing to deal with, Torn Urshifu. The idea of a giant electric brontosaurus volt switching away. Like, everything else that can volt switch is usually relatively small. Then you have this giant, towering, 17-foot-tall dinosaur. Volt I think Zekrom gets volt switch, too. Th that's even funnier. <laughs> just like, zoop! <laughs> just gone. Yeah. Just disappear. <laughs> Yeah, or like big stuff that gets u turn and it's like they're just doing a little like I like imagine like to imagine they're doing like a little Dark Souls somersault away. Yeah. Like just tumble, 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 tumble. <laughs> just into the Pokeball that's just sitting on the ground, just tumble back into it. Less less a U turn and more a uh, twenty point turn. <laughs> I'm trying to look and see if it gets any other really, really crazy moves. Um rising voltage. I mean it is it is cool because it's kind of a uh it's really a paradox mon that could be good on either um I mean, we really don't have Tapu Koko still, so there's not a great Electric Terrain mon. Raging Bolt could definitely perform well in Electric Terrain on like a team with uh, future Paradoxes as well. Uh, again, I, I just think it's fantastic. Oh, and it gets uh, Snarl. Okay, that's awesome. That's huge for it, actually. That'll just that'll help stop a little the bit of the Flutter, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it really wants to go toe to toe with Flutter without Terraing, but it's got enough bulk. You could probably I could see this thing very easily running an Assault Vest. Yeah, no, I, there's there's good things to be had. All right, we got two more. We have time for two more. And now we get to deal with the losers at the bottom, starting with nobody's favorite of the future heroes, Iron Boulder. Oh, my God. I feel real bad for him. Yeah, I was at a local talking about this guy. And um, someone, I guess, had like looked at leaked stats that were not correct. And they were like, yeah, it's got like 145 attack stat. And I was like, oh my god, that's going to be crazy. And then, like, that was incorrect. It's fast, though. I'll give it that. 124 is pretty good. Yeah, uh, 124 is good. I mean, its typing is interesting. It now shares a niche with, so with Soul Rock and Luna Tan. Oh, its signature move is pretty good. It just hits through Protect. Yeah, that's fine. It moves, I just feel real bad because whenever we get to these future Pokemon, it's like, so what are you based on? Robot. Okay. Buddy. Yeah, there's sure. a little less excitement. Um, it is faster than Urshifu and one shots Urshifu. So that's I will fun. say it does add some really fun lore because if you read the Pokedex entry, it states that in another universe, this thing was created by an evil organization for crime. That's awesome. Oh yes, I see that. That's awesome. It's literally like an evil version of a justice monster. That's really cool. I like it. I like that part. That's awesome to me. Like, I I'm just trying to think which evil team was using this, and it has to be Team Plasma, right? They're from Unova. This was it was Cyrus. It was just Cyrus. Just Cyrus. <laughs> he was 
he was sad. Try again. He, he got so sad. So he left and tried being sad somewhere else and just made more robots. But like Team Plasma also like was tinkering with like genetic experiments and monstrosities. Like they made Genesect. Just like in another universe, they're like, wow, this worked great. Grab the other ones. We're going to make something even cooler. And they failed because it doesn't look cool at all. It's very fast. Uh, move pool wise, it's got some stuff, kind of. Um, I mean, it's got sword dance. It's got all the Terrakian type moves as well. Throat chop is cool. It gets meteor beam, which it doesn't like. But apparently, Iron Moth gets meteor beam, which I'm excited about. Whoa, 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 whoa. Iron Moth gets meteor beam. <laughs> oh, oh no. I feel like some of the future mons have better. Well, that's not right. I was. I feel like they have better coverage as a rule, but Fluttermane has every coverage, so like that's not even fair. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's cool. Meteor Beam is cool. This thing is just kind of a little bit it's weird. Not using, I mean, it's got, you know, so you've got Swords Dance, which you probably won't want to use. You've got all the standard. Um, you're still slower than Flutter Main, which hurts. I mean, you could run Booster Energy on it or something, I guess. Um, Mighty Cleave is kind of cool. Either way, a physical psychic type isn't, you know, the most uncommon thing these days, but it, it's fine. I just don't like the design. Meanwhile, last and not least, weirdly enough, is Iron I'm Crown. excited about this guy. Iron Crown should have been called Iron Justice. I stand by that from the last episode. Iron I, Justice. I, yeah, they, they messed this name up real bad. Yeah, Iron Justice is such a better name because I wouldn't need a nickname. I would just be, I would name everything else Iron Justice and get banned because that's against the rules of a tournament. I would, everything is Iron Justice here. It's if we such don't a, get future Keldeo and its name isn't Iron Justice, what are we even doing? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, I want a robot unicorn. I want a robot unicorn fighting on by my side, but it doesn't get a cool background story. Wait, why are you excited about it? That it just gets a double attack? What's its normal double attack? I mean, like, so it gets the tachyon blade. Um, no. So, um, if you look at its stats, 98 speed is not bad. You're faster than Urshifu, which is kind of my benchmark right now for if you can be good or not. Defenses are fine, not crazy. 122 special attack is, like, pretty good. Not insane, but pretty good. Do you know what other spread... When you said double attack, I thought you were about the other double attack it gets that is now a TM. What does it get? Expanding force. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Pain. So now we have a fast Psy Spam mod. Um, we know Hatterene gets expanding force too. So I think this is cool too. I think the um the slower style team might is might struggle a little more with things like Assault Vezrilla Boom. Um, but I think I think this thing having expanding force is pretty cool. Um, it's steel psychic also, which like that's that's like S tier type Metagross, of. just Metagross type. Yeah, you're Metagross and Jirachi. Um, yeah, steel psychic is a very good typing. Um, you're still weak to ghost, but you like can threaten Fluttermane a little better, I think, as well. You got to worry about Insin. Double double worry about Insin though. Yeah, but I, and you're gonna run you're gonna run special attacking on this thing if I had to guess looking at the type. So you really don't have looking at moves the best way to hit Insin outside of like Sacred Terra Sword. Ground. Yeah, but I mean you're gonna get intimidated and you have base seventy two oh, attack. Yeah, you're not doing if you do fifty percent. I'm surprised. Focus blast. No, I'm literally like no, I'm I'm literally looking at the same list of yours like no. No, we're not using focus mist. Yeah, no, I think I think um you're probably gonna want to just not have use it into Incineroar, or you're gonna want to have um like a Terra Ground or something. Yeah, that might be the way to go. Is honestly Terra Ground or Terra Water, something. I, I mean, I, I I think though, I think if you're using this thing, you're probably using it with Psy Spam, so you're probably maximizing your psychic damage, and I think you're gonna probably bring other things to kill and send if i had to guess that's in that's like what jumps out to me is a fast expanding force it also knows volt switch so if you do want to if you want to scarf it up you can put that on there to try and make a clean getaway yeah you could go scarf with it, it oh it gets gravity too oh well no it's not as fast as sandy shock so it's not as good of a gravity nothing is as fast as sandy shock <laughs> um but it does get that tachyon cutter mood which is what i was going to be talking about so its power is 50 and it hits twice. It's a steel type attack that can hit twice through and doesn't miss. If you want to kill a Mimikyu, this is how you kill a Mimikyu. Like one turn, it's gone. 
Yeah, mimic you sub flutter other things that are weak to steel probably um. Yeah, no, this is a really good move to add. Like if you went this with volt switch, expanding force, you know, the tachyon cutter, and then Terra, so that way you can tear ground. You got yourself a decent set right there. Yeah, you've got options. You, I mean, I, I, I would probably like life orbit or something even. Go protect on there again. It's, it, it depends on what you want. It's not again. I like it. I do. The thing that I wanted to talk about though, with the fact that it's name of tachyon cutter and what it really means. So, like, tachyons are a theoretical particle in physics, and you've probably heard tachyon before because science fiction's been using it since the 70s as, like, a descriptor for time travel and, like, part of it. I'm, I'm not into quantum Ooh, it's mechanics. It's a good word to sound science-y with. W watch any episode of the CW Flash, and you'll hear it, like, six times. Yeah. The idea of a tachyon is it's a particle that is constantly exceeding the speed of light. Think of it as the reverse of any normal particle in our world where it cannot break the speed of light. This thing cannot go slower than the speed of light. And so the idea is that if you were potentially observing this particle, you could see it before it was created and thus, and thus mess with our reality. Like it could mess with our perceptions of reality. Because of that, again, it, this is like... The boohoo baby version of a tachyon. I'm a biologist, not a quantum mechanic. The the bottom line is that with that description, people have used it for every sci-fi thing imaginable. The reason I bring this up is that if this thing is to be believed, like the reason the tachyon thing hits twice is that it's hitting you once and then it's coming back from the past to hit you again. Which <laughs> I, I just I just think of that it's really funny. He's not hurting Hilly fast for a split second. There's just two of him beating on you, and then he leaves. Which I I just love that idea. I just imagine him just beating on you with a friend, and I don't know. I like that. I like Iron Crown. I will be renaming him to be Iron Justice when I do have him on a team. But otherwise, I think this batch of Pokemon is pretty okay. I don't like all of them, but. You know, I I like this DLC more than Teal Mask so far. I like the additions in this one more than the Teal Mask. Yeah, I'm just, and now... I, I just like Hydrapple. That's it. Now we wait two months to see what Pokemon drops on us for next year. Who knows? There's been rumors of Pokemon theme parks popping up next year. Like, there's, there's all kinds of weird stuff popping up on the internet these days, but... Who knows what we'll get in the next game. And apparently there were Pokemon that they didn't release in this DLC that Cerberi dug up. I'm not going to... Like, if you guys want to go look them up, you can find it easily enough if you're listening. I think it's really cool that they added something like... <laughs> this stupid Hydra Apple was the best thing ever. And I can't believe I would... I would if I, When I first saw this Pokemon, when I first saw Apple, I never imagined that it would get to this far. And to be quite honest... It would lead to this point. Yeah, no, Applin is one of the reasons why we met Chris to begin with. So it's like, That's yeah. right. It's a very special Pokemon to the hearts of the show. Yeah, no, it really means a lot to us that this thing is the best. It, the Apple Dragon beat out the Fiery Dragon Triceratops, the Brontosaurus made of lightning, the future robot of evil, and Iron Justice as our favorite thing. <laughs> I love this franchise for just going all out on that. Oh, I can't wait to see what people do with this game. I, I mean, we're literally recording this the day it released. So hopefully people get a chance to listen to this and make their own opinions of it. But for now, we'll, we'll go ahead and let them play. So we should have at least one more episode before the new year. Um, So please, guys, if you want to talk to us and suggest things for the new year, things you want us to change or things, ideas you want us to try... We are always on listening on our Discord. We are always trying to help and get your guys' ideas out there. Um, we are on socials. I'm trying to do better to be on X, formerly Twitter. If you want to communicate with us there, I get it. Uh, we want to have fun and we want to grow. And it's been a lot of fun growing with y'all this year. So thank you guys so much for listening to us. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have fun on the DLC, everybody. Bye. Bye.